What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again here today with our area unit and we are going to be using area to determine possible perimeters. Ooh, exciting. So let's uncover what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to use the area of a rectangle to help determine the possible perimeters of the same rectangle by making a chart. That is a mouthful, but let's just start with our math vocabulary. And so we want to have a common definition and understanding of a couple words that we're going to be talking about throughout the lesson. And so our first one is perimeter. When we talk about perimeter today, we are talking about the total length around the edges of a figure. So here we have a rectangle and you can find the perimeter of any closed figure. Okay. But what we want to know is the total length. And then the keyword here is around the edges. Okay. So if you go around the edges and walk all the way around it, what is the total length? Now, in fact, perimeter actually means the measure. So meter means measure and peri means around or it comes from the root word for, for round from Greek or Latin. I don't remember which one. So the word perimeter literally means measure around which is what you're doing when you find the perimeter. For area, we're gonna have the same definition we've had for every lesson of this unit, the number of unit squares that cover the surface of a figure. So when we're talking about area, we're trying to cover, okay, the surface of this with square units, all right? So perimeter is around the edges, area is covering the surface of the figure. What we're gonna do today is use these together because both of these use the dimensions of our figure to help us solve for them. But before we do that, we need to rewind back to when we learned about products and factors. So this question is asking you, what are the possible arrays you can make for an array that has a product of 14? I know that kind of sounds weird, but you're basically, you wanna make an array with 14, what are the different ways you could do it? So what I think about first is I think about what are the factors of 14? And I'm going to write those down using a factor rainbow first. If you don't remember how to do that, you can check out our awesome factor lesson where we give a give you a really concrete way to help us solve these. And the first factors I always know about are 1 times itself. So I have 1 and 14. Okay. Now I know 14 is an even number, so I can also do 2 and 7. And then there's no other way to make 14. I can't do 3, 4, 5, or 6. So my factor rainbow is 1 times 4 or 14 times 1 or two times seven and going backwards seven times two. So I want to make those arrays. All right, so I just made these arrays. And so here is 14 is my length dimension and I have one for my width. And then here, obviously I have two and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I had to double check I did it right. Now I could turn these, right, and make this vertical, make that horizontal, but that's just the commutative property. These are the two different arrays that I can make. Now, if you remember, we've been talking about area. Area really is an array because we're covering the surface of, for us, rectangles using square units. So both of these have the same area, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Okay, square units cover this and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 14 square units cover this one. But if you notice, they look different. And in fact, if you count the edges, they have a different perimeter. So opposite parallels can be the same. This is gonna be 14. Opposite parallel is the same. This is gonna be 14. This array has a perimeter of 30 units. Because if you go around the edges, it'd be 14 plus one, plus 14 plus one, that gives you a perimeter of 30. This array, even though it has the same area, there we go, two plus seven is nine, plus another nine is going to be 18 units. So if you look at this, even though they have the same amount of squares that make them up, they have a completely different perimeter. And that leads us to the type of questions we're gonna be doing today. Our I do problem says, what are the possible dimensions and perimeters of a rectangle with an area of 12 square meters? So just like we made the arrays in our last slide, we want to make different size rectangles that have the same area. So all of our rectangles are gonna be made with 12 square meters, 
but the length and width is going to be different for each of them. The first thing I want to do is think about what are my factors of 12. So if I make a factor rainbow of 12, I start with 1 times 12. I also know that 2, because it's even, times 6 is going to equal 12. As a matter of fact, I can connect these. And then I have 3 times 4. If I make the length 1 and the width 12, my array would look like this. So if my width is 12 and my length is 1, okay, what is my perimeter? Well, I need to count all the edges, not just two dimensions. I need to count all my dimensions up to find the perimeter, okay, because I'm going around the edges of my shape, and that's going to give me a perimeter of 26 meters. All right, now if I switch these and I flipped it, I could do 12 as my width and 1 as my length, and um, I could also have 26 meters doing that. All right, if I want to make a completely different one now, I can do 2 and 6. So now if I make my length 6 and my width 2, okay, again I have to add up all the edges because I'm going around the edges of my figure, and that's going to give me a perimeter of 16 meters. All right, and then I can also flip these, and I can do 2, two if I wanted to turn it, I could do 2 as my length and 6 as my width, but I'm still going to get 16 meters meters. So based on my factors, I can do one more array. I can use three and four. So I can do three as my length and four as my width, or I could flip those and do that. And for this one now, now I'm just going to draw this one, okay? Instead of using my arrays, if I draw this, oops, badly, and I make my length three and my width four, and I add up the edges of my figure, three plus four is seven, plus another seven is going to be 14 meters. And then I'd have 14 meters again if I just flip my rectangle and switch the length and the width. So when you look at this chart, you'll see the areas are the same. All of these are covered with 12 square meters. But when you change the length and the width, it changed the perimeter. And something I'm starting to notice is for the 1 and the 12, these numbers had the most distance between the two factors and my perimeter was bigger. When my factors were really close to each other, my perimeter was the smallest. So I'm kind of starting to notice a pattern as, as my factors get closer together, my perimeter gets smaller. Let's, so it says the area of the tabletop is 84 square feet. What could the perimeter be? All right, if you are ready, you're gonna pause it, try to solve it yourself using your chart, using your problem solving strategy, and then push play to check your work. If you're not there yet, that's okay because this takes a little bit of practice. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. And you can just do this with us as a we do problem. Hopefully, if you're ready, you just paused it and tried it. So let's go over it so you can check your work. So my question, my statement's gonna say the perimeter could be blank feet. So I'm gonna say the perimeter could be blank feet, all right? So I'm gonna go back and look for anything about feet. I know I have a tabletop that is 84 square feet. This is my area, because it's square feet. And I wanna know what the perimeter could be. All right, so I'm gonna make the same chart I just made, okay? I have my area here. I have my length and my width, and then I want to know which of those could be my possible perimeters. So I know my area is gonna be 84 for all of them, whatever options I have. So the first thing I need to do to figure out is what are my factors of 84? So my factors of 84, obviously I'm gonna start with one and 84, okay? So I'm gonna do one and 84, and I'm going to stop here for a second because if it's multiple choice, I'm going to check them as I go this time because I might not have to make my whole chart. I'm going to stop when I find an answer. That's a perimeter. So I'm going to draw this out. Okay. And I know I have, if I have 84 here and one here, that means I have to have my opposite sides congruent. So when I add these up, I get a perimeter of 100. 70 feet, okay? So I know that it's not gonna be one in 84. So now I need to go to my next factor, which I know two because this is even. Two times 42 is my next dimensions that I could possibly have. So I'm gonna erase this, okay? I'm gonna draw that rectangle. And I'm really, I'm just drawing a rectangle to help me know that I have to add both sides. And so if I have 42 here and two here, when I add that together, I'm going to get 88 feet for my perimeter, okay? Now, if I only added 42 plus 42, I would have gotten 84. So you got it. they know what answers to put in here to try to trick you. So I know that it can't be 168 because I went from 170 to 88, all right? So I can cross that one out. Let's keep going. And so my next one is going to be three in 28, all right? 
And if you um, don't know how to find factors again, check out our factor lesson. It's a great video. That's the same strategy I'm using now, but I don't want to go through how to find the factors in this video because that's not the focus of it. But I'm using that skill from our other lesson here. So now if I draw this rectangle out, all right, and I have 28 here, which means 28 is going to be the opposite side because opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. And I add these together. I know that 2 plus 28 is 31. And 31 plus 31 is going to be 62. So if my error is 84, I could have 3 and 28. And I could get a perimeter of 62 feet, which means I can now cross out 84 feet because I can't have one in between these two numbers. So if I keep going, I'm kind of running out of room here. I have 4 and 21 would be my next factor pair. And so I'm going to do 21 here, 21 here, 4 and 4. And when I add these together, 24, 21 plus 4 is 25. 25 plus 25 is going to be 50. Okay, so if I had this, I would have 4 and 21. My perimeter of that rectangle would be 50 feet. And as you can see, I'm getting smaller and smaller, right? Because as your factor pairs get closer and closer, your perimeter gets smaller. We noticed that in our early example. So none of these factor pairs work, which means I'm just going to erase them. So my next factor pair, okay, in my factor rainbow when I would make in these would be 6 and 14, all right? And if I drew my rectangle that was 6 and 14, again, I'd have to add both of those sides together. I know that 6 plus 14 is going to be 20. 20 plus 20 would give me an area, or sorry, a perimeter of 40 feet, which means that factor pair doesn't work. And I only have one more factor pair when I listed all my factors out. I have 7 and 12. So when I draw this rectangle right here, if I made this 12 and that 12, 7 and 7, 12 plus 7 is going to be 19. When I add 19 plus 19 to go all the way around, that gives me a perimeter of 38. So to have an area of 84, I can have the, the, all of these dimensions, but the only dimensions that gave me a perimeter that I could choose from was 7 and 12. So the only perimeter that I can make when my area is 84 is 38. We hope you'll check out our area and perimeter song. Thank you again. Instruct the beats. Out.